All right, Aries, I had to laugh. I did. I had to laugh when Eternal Youth came flying out because I'm like, of course, we're talking about Aries. But what, <laughs> what I find even more interesting is that you're being asked to slow down, which, you know, I, I, I don't know how many Aries will listen to that, right? Because you guys are always go, 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 new adventure, new experience, right? But what I'm getting from this more so than anything is that something new is coming to you that's going to uplift you. It's going to make you feel good. But in the meantime, slow down. Don't be too quick to act on new things that you may be feeling or thinking right now. So from Lay Vampire, Eternal Youth, Energy, Newness, and Vitality, and Breath from Wisdom of the Oracle. Eternal Youth. What I love about this is the blessing. It says you are you are about to be rejuvenated and filled with energy and potential. You will look and feel very well and your health will be vital. You will be very attractive and people will be drawn to your youthful free spirit and optimism. If that's not Aries, I don't know what the hell is, right? But slow down, right? Let that come to you. Don't act on things that you're thinking and feeling right now, especially if they're not in a place of upliftment, so to speak. So breathe. It says, now is the time to allow the life-giving element of air to replenish your body and your being and your very essence. It says, stop to smell the roses, breathe in the sunlight, and release the darkness and miracles will appear. So just don't, don't do anything just yet, right? Now, for some of you, if you're really excited about something new, you know, just slow, slow your roll. Slow down for a minute. You know, don't be too quick to do something. The South Node in Aquarius. So it would make sense, right? Like, don't do anything just yet. Just chill. Just stay chill, right? Damn, man. What the hell? <laughs> Here, overall, judgment. Shit. I have issues with judgment, but it's not a bad thing. Okay. Judgment is about rebirth, the call to action, right? Needing to review things, laying the past to rest. You know, it's a good thing. The only judgment we ever face is our own. So it's not like you've got some higher power that's judging you for actions that you have taken in the past here. It's about you like owning up to everything that has happened, letting it go so that you can move on to the world, right? Feeling successful and hopefully seeing the star. But damn, man, now this could be about something that's coming back up that you're going to be forced to look at. But again, it's for a good reason with judgment. Oh boy. All right. In the past, the Seven of Cups. Okay. All right. The Seven of Cups, when you're looking at this one, typically you're talking about somebody who fantasizes about different things that could possibly happen in their life. The problem there is the emotional attachment to a potential outcome, right? That's where expectations you need to release. Now, if we're talking about something that you've been fantasizing about in the past with judgment, it may be coming up in a very real way where you're going to have to look at it, not from a fantasy perspective anymore. But if this is a real possibility, how is this going to work now? What do I need to do to realize this? You know, so I see this as a good thing, but I think that for some of you, whatever it is that's coming back up, you didn't think was possible for you, you know, and I don't necessarily feel like this is reality killing the fantasy. You know, I really do think that this is something that you didn't think was possible coming back up, right? Oh boy, in the present, the Nine of Cups. Very nice, very nice. And it's interesting because, you know, even with the Nine of Pentacles, for some of you, you may feel like you have everything that you need, but what is that one thing, that one thing that would bring you to the Ten of Cups, right? So with the Nine of Cups, again, you know, especially with the Seven of Cups, what is realistic in terms of what you are wishing for, right? But this is I want, this is what's going to make me feel abundant, this is what's going to make me feel happy and fulfilled. But you're going to have to take a look at the way that you look at the things that are going to actually make you happy, right? Wow, man. <laughs> I'm going to guess here <laughs> that some of you may be dealing with some water here or you've got some water going on in your chart. The chariot. Now... With the chariot being in future conditions, the thing is, is going back to your oracle cards right now, again, right now you need to kind of slow down and take a big look at things, especially with judgment. Okay. 
but eternal youth, like I said, I feel like that's what's coming to you with the chariot. It's like, boom, I'm going, but you have self-control, right? You don't want to be pulled in all these different directions. You want to know exactly how you're feeling and where you're headed so that you have that sense of victory, momentum forward. Some of you may be actually traveling, going to what it is that you've always wanted. Some of you may be realizing now that, you know, you have the opportunity to see all the different things that you have wanted to see, right? And again, like, I feel like for some of you, it is like, I'm going to travel here, right? Like making plans to do that, you know? And for some of you it could literally be, well, like I've always fantasized about going to see this place. And now it's like, it's here. You get to do this now, right? But I do like the chariot and future conditions, but I still feel like the advice stands that right now, just, just slow down. Better things are coming. You just don't see it yet. <laughs> Your best path to follow, the Nine of Swords. Stop letting fear and anxiety get a hold of you. The Nine of Swords is, you know, this is the effect Okay, so I always talk about the connection between the Three of Swords and the Nine of Swords, right? The cause and the effect. This is the effect of something that has happened to you, you know, and, and normally it's going to suggest something that was like negative. So, you know, whatever you've experienced before, you need to be careful that, you know, your thoughts are not putting you right back into this place of keeping you, you know, trapped. It's funny because I kind of get like an Eight of Swords type of feeling. But then, you know, like I feel the Three of Swords with it though too. Which is why you may have been looking at something coming back up in the past as a Seven of Cups. Like it wasn't real, but you were okay with fantasizing about what it could have been. But now with it coming up in such a big way, you know, it would make sense that your thoughts are like all over the place. Let go of that, you know, just take a breath take a breath, you know, because I'm not seeing anything bad here. You know, you may have some negative thoughts surrounding something that you were fantasizing about because it didn't actually happen in the past, but now it's very much here, you know, so whatever negative thoughts are keeping you stuck, you got to let go of that, you know, and you can't carry that with you, especially with the chariot being there, because if you're talking about momentum forward, you don't want to be pulled, you know, in a direction where things go very wrong very quick because of your own thoughts. But this to me indicates that something something happened to you in such a way that it makes you feel like what you want is impossible. You know, but judgment is saying, oh no, 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 we're going to have to take a different look at it this time. You know, but I still feel good about the way that it's coming out on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In your environment, the Six of Cups. I mean, look at it, you know, reviewing the past, you know, in the past being realized now, becoming reality, you know, this, yeah, this is definitely something good from the past coming back up in connection to the Nine of Cups. This is something that I think some of you have wanted, you know, you may have some fears and anxieties surrounding it, but like, it's okay. Like everything's going to be fine, you know? Just don't, don't make any quick assessment or judgment right now, you know, because I keep going back to those Oracle cards, but you know, the six of cups, I'm looking at it with the nine of cups and the seven of cups going, yeah, this is something that, you know, you want. It's something that's going to make you happy. It's going to make you feel fulfilled. You may not have been able to realize it in the past, but it's coming up in a very real way right now. And you may have to get up and get after it with the chariot. Oh, <laughs> these Aries, the hell's going on. The moon, hopes and fears. And to me, it makes sense, right? They're, they're, your thoughts and your feelings are going to be like all over the place right now. If you have something coming up that, you know, you had fantasized about that you really want, it would make sense that for some of you, fears and anxieties are taking hold, you know, but with the nine of swords, right? Like I, I worry that it's going to keep you trapped, that you're going to, you know, allow that fear and anxiety to keep you in a way of being. And that may be why we were looking at, you know, the nine of pentacles, you know, you have everything that you need right where you're at, but what are you missing out on? You know, the page of wands and the star, right? The moon is looking at things from a distorted perspective. 
you know, and again, it not seeing things as they really are, needing to pay attention to your instincts here, needing to tap in a little bit deeper into the subconscious and pull up all of these fears and anxieties and get rid of them. You know, the fear there would be that you're not seeing what you want accurately. But like I said, with judgment being there, it's like, oh no, this is very real this time. It's very real. But damn, man, that's so big though for that to be there. You know, you're just going to have to do the, the subconscious work, right? Whatever negative beliefs that you have right now, you're going to have to get rid of that. Like I always said, it's better to have ideas than beliefs. You know, beliefs can be a very good thing, but can also be a very bad thing. But whatever beliefs that you hold in your subconscious right now, you're going to have to take a deeper look at that because what is happening for you is, first of all, very good, very, very good and very real this time. And then coming out the Empress, damn man, yeah, you, you're going to be very happy, very, very happy, <laughs> but you're going to have to get up and get after it, but you need to make sure that you have a sense of direction with the chariot. The Empress. If that's not perfect, especially if you're an Aries female, if you're an Aries male, it still applies. There's going to be abundance all the way around you. You're going to be able to bring to life something that you didn't think was real, right? And you're going to be able to enjoy it, be happy, right? Enjoying the physical senses. It's perfect. It's perfect. Just chill right now, right? Like wait for this to come to you, you know, and you will know because like I said, for a lot of you, this is going to be something that you didn't think was real in the past, you know, so just be careful at how you're looking at it, right? And then the Hierophant, damn, man. <laughs> All right, the Three of Swords with the Seven of Cups. This is what I'm talking about because, you know, I, the, the past, your thoughts surrounding the past, being heartbroken when it comes to trying to go after things that, you know, ended up being just... A fantasy that you couldn't make reality now for some of you you may have had an option in the past but you know with the three of swords right you were heartbroken heartbroken that something wasn't realized you know when I go back to the nine of swords and think you need to be careful about where your thoughts are leading you based on past experiences past feelings the high priestess with the Nine of Cups and the Six of Cups, this is something from the past coming back up in a way that I think that you knew about, but this is hidden information coming to light. But this, I don't usually see deception with the High Priestess. Secrets, maybe. But this is always hidden information that is available to you if you so choose to seek it. Now, with Judgment being the overall here and looking at the Six of Cups, it's something that I think that you knew but didn't have, you know, actual like facts to support it, right? Because one of the things I talk about with the high priestess is like, you know, like, you know, you know, intuitively, but you don't have the facts to support it. I think that that's what's happening, but it's on an emotional level for you, for the way that you respond to it. So this is definitely something that you're not aware of that is coming to light here. And with the Hierophant, what I feel like here is that, you know, whatever you are committed to now, especially with a high priestess being there, you know, it's time to do things in a very different way. I don't think that this is about needing to do things by the book, right? Because the high priestess and the hierophant would suggest something that is not traditional, you know, outside the box, right? Now, the other thing though, is with the empress coming out though, and this is where I feel a little bit iffy with the hierophant. If you make the choice here to act on whatever is coming back to you in a very real way, you're going to have to stick to it. You're going to have to make a commitment to it. Eventually, it leads to the Empress where there is this abundance, right? Now, this may be, you know, something that you didn't realize was possible. Like I said, with the High Priestess, it's like that information comes out. But, you know, I, I feel a little bit iffy with the Hierophant in terms of conformity. You know, I don't think that you need to do things by the book, so to speak, here. But there is, you know, the knowledge, the knowledge that's gained through the process that leads to continuous abundance with the Empress. But I feel both. I feel like you're going to have to commit to where you're headed. But whatever commitments you've already made, 
right? It's not that you're breaking them, but you're doing things in a very different way, a much different way, right? The Hierophant for me has so many different feelings surrounding it. You know, when you're talking about the conduit between God and man, spirituality and man, right? Seeking that person that's going to give you understanding. But you have the high priestess there, which on a spiritual level, especially with the moon being hopes and fears, intuitively, you're, you know, like, you know. But I think that this is going to have more so to do with a commitment right? But needing to commit in a way that works for you, you know, and only in a way that is going to continue this kind of abundance and happiness and being comfortable, being able to enjoy your life. I like it. It's a little heavy with the majors coming out, but I like it, you know, and it may be that, especially with judgment being there, that you're going to have to look at this and go, you know what? I need to commit this time. You know, I need to stick to this and not give up. Yeah. You know, and, and certainly though, like I, I feel iffy in terms of the advice with the Hierophant coming out, especially with the chariot judgment and, and the Empress. It's like, geez, man, <laughs> don't commit to anything that you don't feel comfortable with, but don't settle for anything less than commitment from, you know, an outside source, whether we're talking about relationship or work here, trust. Trust in the mystery. And then you have the high priestess, right? Trust in the mystery of life and the way that things work and the way that things unfold. Play. And you have eternal youth, right? Like you need to be able to enjoy life. And the empress, you know, we all need a break from the heavy, from the day to day, from, you know, needing to survive. You need to also enjoy what physical reality has to offer. Oh, I got two here. Overcoming obstacles and in the flow. Not bad. Everything is smooth sailing and you can over, overcome anything. My God, if I could talk right. So the only way to overcome obstacles here is by clearing the air, right? I look at this as needing to speak up, needing to speak a truth and clear everything out. And once you do that, everything is going to be perfect, right? Like everything is going to go exactly the way that it needs to. It looks good to me, Aries, you know, clearing the air though. What I will say is that when you do this, be careful about what you choose to say. And it's not that you need to censor yourself, but I feel more so that you need to have facts to support what it is that you're trying to clear up so that you're not in like a five of swords, five of wands type of situation, right? But once you clear the air, whatever obstacles are in your path are going to be gone. And it's going to be smooth sailing. I like it. You guys are going to have to let me know. But I think that all of this is going to be about something coming back in a very real way for you. That holds a lot of happiness, a lot of abundance for you in the end. But like I said, for now, the advice stands. Just take a breath, right? Just chill. Let this stuff come to you. Don't be quick to act on anything. 